This instructional video about using the Turnitin tool in conjunction with eCollege is proudly brought to you by the Instructional Technology Team at St. Leo University. Questions about this instructional technology tool can be addressed to our email address, instructional.technology at stleo.edu. In this short video, you will learn how to interpret a similarity report generated by the Turnitin tool in conjunction with the eCollege Dropbox tool. After watching this video, you should be able to view and interpret the report generated by Turnitin for an assignment submission and use that information to evaluate a student's work. To recap, Turnitin is a text matching or plagiarism detection software that compares documents submitted via the eCollege Dropbox tool with a database of content, including other students' assignments, scholarly articles, internet content, and more. You can view Turnitin originality reports two ways. The first way is by clicking on the Dropbox tool in your eCollege course, which takes you to the list of all Dropbox assignments in the course. You can click on the name of a Dropbox to show you all of the submissions for that assignment. Alternatively, you can click on the Students button at the top of the Dropbox list, and then click on a student's name to view all of the submissions from a particular student. The icons in the last column indicate the status of the originality report, as well as the overall similarity percentage. That is, the percentage of a student's work that matches other content in the Turnitin database. If you see a colored bar with a percentage, this indicates that the originality report is available to view. We'll look at the different color indicators in just a minute. First, let's look at some of the other status indicators. If you see a blue circle pointing to a document with a clock, it indicates that the system is actively processing the submission. If you wait a few minutes and then refresh the page, it should be finished. If you see a red circle pointing to a document with a question mark, it indicates that the file is not supported by the system and the student should resubmit the file in another format. Supported file types include Microsoft Word or DOC, DOCX files, text files, Adobe Portable Document Format or PDF files, PostScript, or PS files, hypertext markup language or HTML files, WordPerfect or WPD files, and rich text format or RTF files. If you see a red circle followed by a red X, the system has encountered an error with the submission, or the service is experiencing a connectivity issue. In either of these cases, you should seek technical support by clicking on the Tech Support tool from the Tools menu, located near the upper right corner of the screen. Most of the time, you will simply see the colored bar with a percentage. The color of the bar is an easy way of quickly gauging the level of similarity for a particular submission. Blue indicates that less than 1% of the submission's content is similar to other sources. Green indicates that between 1 to 24% of the submission's content is similar to other sources. Yellow indicates that between 24 to 49 percent of the submission's content is similar to other sources. Orange indicates that between 50 to 74 percent of the submission's content is similar to other sources. And red indicates that between 75 to 100 percent of the submission's content is similar to other sources. You can view the originality report for a submission by clicking on the originality report score indicator, the colored bar, next to the submission. A pop-up window will then load with the originality report. This is an example of an originality report as viewed by an instructor. The text on the left side is the student's paper. On the right side, you will see the match overview sidebar. This shows you sources that parts of the assignment have matched. Note that they are color-coded and numbered to allow you to more easily identify the sources within the report. Before we look more closely at the report, notice the dark gray bar near the top. Notice that you can use the pull-down menus to quickly jump to another assignment altogether or jump to another student's paper within the current assignment without having to switch back to eCollege. So, how does an instructor interpret this originality report? First, look at the overall similarity score near the top right. This score indicates how much of the paper matches text within the Turnitin database. Beneath the overall score, you will find the individual matches and their relative percentages. 
To view the match sections in the context of the paper, you can click on each numbered match, which will automatically scroll the paper on the left to the matched text. To view more detailed analysis of the match, click the right pointing arrow that appears next to the match in the sidebar. This loads the detailed match breakdown in the sidebar. Click on each detailed match to automatically scroll to it in the paper on the left. Notice that a pop-up appears above the match text that indicates what sort of material has been matched, the details of the materials matched, and even a snippet of the original text in some cases. To view the database content that was matched more closely, in other words, the original source, click on the title in the pop-up or click on the arrow that appears next to each match in the Match Breakdown sidebar. Note that you may have to request permission to view the matched content since submitted papers remain the intellectual property of their authors, instructors, and respective institutions. As you can see in this example, the text in match number one exactly matches the section of text in the Mintel report, an internet source. In this case, Notice that the student has indicated the source of the work, Mintel 2010, but has neglected to use quotation marks that indicate a direct quotation. Since the quotation is improperly punctuated, it is flagged. Now, let's compare this with a student who has properly used a direct quotation. In this example, the quotation is still showing as a match, and even counts as part of the overall similarity score but an instructor will see that the student has referenced correctly in this case, and there is, therefore, no plagiarism. Let's go back to the first piece of work we looked at. Turnitin also matches papers to works submitted by other students at the same university, helping instructors identify cases of potential sharing or copying. Of course, some matches are merely common phrases, such as this next example. In all likelihood, another student in the course or a similar course at the school, completed the same assignment and used the same series of common words. However, let's look at another example with a match from the same university. In this case, the student has changed a few words or interjected a word here or there in a portion of heavily matched text. These are not common phrases, so this case may require further investigation by the instructor. Another common mistake is poorly paraphrased work, like in this next example. Here, one can tell that this is meant to be an indirect quotation, given the lack of quotation marks as well as the page number. However, the student only changed an occasional word, which is not paraphrasing. As you can see, the student may need help understanding how to paraphrase material from a source. Let's look at one more example. Read the text in the student's work highlighted in red. Then, compare that to the Mintel source shown in the pop-up box. Feel free to pause this video and think about how you would evaluate this particular match and how you would talk about it with the student. There are other factors to keep in mind when evaluating a similarity score report. The similarity score may be inflated due to the reference list in the paper the bibliography. Other authors may have used the same sources as your student, which would be matched within the Turnitin database, thereby inflating the similarity score. Another common but benign match occurs in running headers and footers. Whenever a student has included the title of his or her work on every page in the work, a harmless match. Remember, Turnitin is a text matching service, not really a plagiarism detection service. It is up to the instructor to interpret the matches in a similarity report and then make appropriate judgments. Instructors can save valuable time by using a routine to interpret Turnitin originality reports. Step 1. Open the Dropbox assignment by going to the Dropbox tool and either clicking the name of an assignment or clicking the Students button and then clicking on a particular student, and then quickly scan the list of similarity scores on the right. Notice how they are color-coded, from red indicating a 100% match to blue indicating a 0% match. Exercising academic judgment assess how many of the papers likely need more than a quick inspection and estimate the minimum time that you'll need to review the entire class if you assume about mm, 30 seconds for unproblematic reports. 
Step 2. Identify where on the range of similarity report scores you need to start investigating. In general, instructors check all reports with similarity percentages over 30 or 35 percent. Sometimes reviewing all reports may be helpful. But many instructors develop their own strategies for deciding when to cut off detailed investigation. Step 3. Now that you're looking at a detailed similarity report, look at the list of sources used on the right side. Evaluate the list by looking at how the overall total was created. If only one or two sources provide the majority of a percentage, it's usually a bad sign. However, if the total is made up of many individual sources that contribute only 1 or 2 percent each, those matches are usually no cause for concern. In cases where single matches contribute to the overall percentage, look at the match breakdown. For example, a 35 percent match made up of three different matches, 12 percent, 12 percent, and 11 percent, is likely to need more investigation than, say, a 35 percent match made up of about 20 1 to 2 percent matches. A good practice is taking no more than 20 seconds to decide whether or not this side-by-side -side detailed investigation is warranted. If it isn't, move on. Step 4. Identify and investigate the subset of reports that call for further investigation, allocating roughly five minutes for each. Remember that you are assembling feedback for the student about their usage of sources and perhaps referring them for further help. When looking at the detailed report, scroll through the matches by clicking on them in the sidebar. While scanning, look for things like indications that copied text is correctly acknowledged with quotation marks, in-text citations, or indentation. Indications that the student has informally acknowledged a source. Places where matching text has no bearing on judging the originality of the paper, such as matches in the list of references or bibliography, or using common phrases. Places where students attempt to paraphrase have remained too close to the original source. The location of matched text since match text is more significant in sections of an assignment where originality and understanding demonstrate that the student has met the learning outcomes. The length of any matched, unattributed text. In general, the longer the match, the more worrisome the case. At this point, use your best academic judgment to decide how to handle possible cases of plagiarism, keeping in mind critical questions such as, what is the amount of a student's work that does not belong to him or her? Where was the copied work used? Is there evidence of deliberate attempts to mislead the evaluator? Source fabrication or alteration, for instance? Can the assessment criteria for the assignment handle a breach of originality, or is this a case of academic misconduct? Are you still able to assess the learning outcomes? I will conclude this segment by reminding you that Turnitin is a text matching database, not a plagiarism detector. It is still incumbent upon you, the faculty, to exercise your best academic judgment when evaluating whether or not a student's work has fulfilled the learning outcomes for the course.